In mathematics, model theory is the study of classes of mathematical structures e.g. groups, fields, graphs, universes of set theory from the perspective of mathematical logic. The objects of study are models of theories in a formal language. A set of sentences in a formal language is one of the components that form a theory. A model of a theory is a structure e.g. an interpretation that satisfies the sentences of that theory. Model theory recognizes and is intimately concerned with a duality, it examines semantical elements meaning and truth by means of syntactical elements formulas and proofs of a corresponding language. Universal algebra plus logic equals model theory. Model theory developed rapidly during the 1990s, and a more modern definition is provided by Wilfred Hodges 1997. Model theory equals algebraic geometry minus fields. Other nearby areas of mathematics include combinatorics, number theory, arithmetic dynamics, analytic functions, and non standard analysis. In a similar way to proof theory, model theory is situated in an area of interdisciplinarity among mathematics, philosophy, and computer science. The most prominent professional organization in the field of model theory is the Association for Symbolic Logic. Topic. Branches of model theory This article focuses on finitary first-order model theory of infinite structures. Finite model theory, which concentrates on finite structures, diverges significantly from the study of infinite structures in both the problems studied and the techniques used. Model theory in higher order logics or infinitary logics is hampered by the fact that completeness and compactness do not in general hold for these logics. However, a great deal of study has also been done in such logics. Informally, model theory can be divided into classical model theory, model theory applied to groups and fields, and geometric model theory. A missing subdivision is computable model theory, but this can arguably be viewed as an independent subfield of logic. Examples of early theorems from classical model theory include Gödel's completeness theorem, the upward and downward lowenheim skolem theorems, Vought's two-cardinal theorem, Scott's isomorphism theorem, the omitting types theorem, and the ryle narduski theorem. Examples of early results from model theory applied to fields are Tarski's elimination of quantifiers for real closed fields, Axe's theorem on pseudo-finite fields, and Robinson's development of non-standard analysis. An important step in the evolution of classical model theory occurred with the birth of stability theory through Morley's theorem on uncountably categorical theories and Shalas classification program, which developed a calculus of independence and rank based on syntactical conditions satisfied by theories. During the last several decades applied model theory has repeatedly merged with the more pure stability theory. The result of this synthesis is called geometric model theory in this article which is taken to include O-minimality, for example, as well as classical geometric stability theory. An example of a theorem from geometric model theory is Harushovsky's proof of the mordell lang conjecture for function fields. The ambition of geometric model theory is to provide a geography of mathematics by embarking on a detailed study of definable sets in various mathematical structures, aided by the substantial tools developed in the study of pure model theory. <laughs> <laughs> Universal algebra Fundamental concepts in universal algebra are signatures sigma and sigma algebras. Since these concepts are formally defined in the article on structures, the present article is an informal introduction which consists of examples of the way these terms are used. The standard signature of rings is sigma ring equals times, plus, minus, zero, one, where times and plus are binary, minus is unary, and zero and one are nullary. The standard signature of semirings is sigma smr equals times, plus, zero, one, where the arities are as above. The standard signature of groups with multiplicative notation is sigma grp equals times minus 1 1 where times is binary minus 1 is unary and 1 is nullary The standard signature of monoids is sigma mnd equals times 1 A ring is a sigma ring structure which satisfies the identities u plus v plus w topic U plus V plus W, U plus V 
V plus U, U plus zero. Topic U, U plus minus U. Zero U times V times W. Topic U times V times W, U times one. U, one times U. Topic U, U times V plus W. U times V plus U times W and V plus W times U equals V times U plus W times U. A group is a sigma GRP structure which satisfies the identities U times V times W. Topic U times V times W U times one U one times U. Topic U U times U minus one one and U minus one times U equals one. A monoid is a sigma MND structure which satisfies the identities U times V times W. Topic U times V times W U times one. U and one times U equals U. A semigroup is a times structure which satisfies the identity U times V times W equals U times V times W. A magma is just a times structure. This is a very efficient way to define most classes of algebraic structures, because there is also the concept of sigma homomorphism, which correctly specializes to the usual notions of homomorphism for groups, semigroups, magmas, and rings. For this to work, the signature must be chosen well. Terms such as the sigma ring term T U, V, W given by U plus V times W plus minus 1 are used to define identities T equals T, but also to construct free algebras. An equational class is a class of structures which, like the examples above and many others, is defined as the class of all sigma structures which satisfy a certain set of identities. Birkhoff's theorem states, a class of sigma structures is an equational class if and only if it is not empty and closed under subalgebras, homomorphic images, and direct products. An important non trivial tool in universal algebra are ultraproducts. Pi i element of i a i u display style pi underscore i in i a underscore i u where I is an infinite set indexing a system of sigma structures I, and U is an ultrafilter on I. While model theory is generally considered a part of mathematical logic, universal algebra, which grew out of Alfred North Whitehead's 1898 work on abstract algebra, is part of algebra. This is reflected by their respective MSc classifications. Nevertheless, model theory can be seen as an extension of universal algebra. Topic finite model theory Finite model theory is the area of model theory which has the closest ties to universal algebra. Like some parts of universal algebra, and in contrast with the other areas of model theory, it is mainly concerned with finite algebras, or more generally, with finite sigma structures for signatures sigma which may contain relation symbols as in the following example, the standard signature for graphs is sigma grph equals e, where e is a binary relation symbol. A graph is a sigma grph structure satisfying the sentence u v u e v v e u display style for all u for all v u e v right arrow v e u. A sigma homomorphism is a map that commutes with the operations and preserves the relations in sigma. This definition gives rise to the usual notion of graph homomorphism, which has the interesting property that a bijective homomorphism need not be invertible. Structures are also a part of universal algebra. After all, some algebraic structures such as ordered groups have a binary relation u1 u2 un t equals t display style for all u_1 u_2 dots u_ n t equals t. The logics employed in finite model theory are often substantially more expressive than first order logic, the standard logic for model theory of infinite structures.
Topic: <laughs> First order logic. Whereas universal algebra provides the semantics for a signature, logic provides the syntax. With terms, identities and quasi-identities, even universal algebra has some limited syntactic tools. First order logic is the result of making quantification explicit and adding negation into the picture. A first order formula is built out of atomic formulas such as R F X Y Z or Y equals X plus 1 by means of the Boolean connectives. Display style neg land lower right arrow and prefixing of quantifiers v display style for all v or v display style exists v. A sentence is a formula in which each occurrence of a variable is in the scope of a corresponding quantifier. Examples for formulas are phi or phi x to mark the fact that at most x is an unbound variable in phi and psi defined as follows. Phi equals u v w x times w equals u times v w x times w equals u w x times W equals V X does not equal zero X does not equal one Display style var phi equals for all u for all v exists w x times w equals u times v right arrow exists w x times w equals u lower exists w x times w equals v land x n e q zero land x n e q one psi equals u v u times v equals x u equals x v equals x x does not equal 0 x does not equal 1 Display style psi equals for all u for all v u times v equals x right arrow u equals x lower v equals x land x n e q zero land x n e q one. Note that the equality symbol has a double meaning here. It is intuitively clear how to translate such formulas into mathematical meaning. In the sigma SMR structure, n display style math call n of the natural numbers, for example, an element n satisfies the formula phi if and only if n is a prime number. The formula psi similarly defines irreducibility. Tarski gave a rigorous definition, sometimes called Tarski's definition of truth, for the satisfaction relation display style models so that one easily proves n phi n n Display style math call n models var phi n i f f n is a prime number n psi n n display style math call n models psi n i f f n is irreducible. A set T of sentences is called a first order theory. A theory is satisfiable if it has a model m t. Display style math call m models t, i.e. a structure of the appropriate signature which satisfies all the sentences in the set t. Consistency of a theory is usually defined in a syntactical way, but in first-order logic, by the completeness theorem, there is no need to distinguish between satisfiability and consistency. Therefore, model theorists often use consistent as a synonym for satisfiable. A theory is called categorical if it determines a structure up to isomorphism, but it turns out that this definition is not useful, due to serious restrictions in the expressivity of first-order logic. The lowenheim skolem theorem implies that for every theory T having a countable signature which has an infinite model for some infinite cardinal number, then it has a model of size kappa for any infinite cardinal number kappa. 
Since two models of different sizes cannot possibly be isomorphic, only finitary structures can be described by a categorical theory. Lack of expressivity when compared to higher logics such as second-order logic has its advantages, though. For model theorists, the lowenheim skolem theorem is an important practical tool rather than the source of Skolem's paradox. In a certain sense made precise by Lindstrom's theorem, first-order logic is the most expressive logic for which both the lowenheim skolem theorem and the compactness theorem hold. As a corollary i.e., its contrapositive, the compactness theorem says that every unsatisfiable first-order theory has a finite unsatisfiable subset. This theorem is of central importance in infinite model theory, where the words, by compactness, are commonplace. One way to prove it is by means of ultraproducts. An alternative proof uses the completeness theorem, which is otherwise reduced to a marginal role in most of modern model theory. Axiomatizability, elimination of quantifiers, and model completeness The first step, often trivial, for applying the methods of model theory to a class of mathematical objects such as groups, or trees in the sense of graph theory, is to choose a signature sigma and represent the objects as sigma structures. The next step is to show that the class is an elementary class, i.e. axiomatizable in first-order logic i.e. there is a theory T such that a sigma structure is in the class if and only if it satisfies T. E.g. this step fails for the trees, since connectedness cannot be expressed in first-order logic. Axiomatizability ensures that model theory can speak about the right objects. Quantifier elimination can be seen as a condition which ensures that model theory does not say too much about the objects. A theory T has quantifier elimination if every first order formula phi x1 xn over its signature is equivalent modulo T to a first order formula psi x1 xn without quantifiers i.e. x1 x n phi x1 x n left right arrow Psi x one x n display style for all x underscore one dots for all x underscore n phi x underscore one dots x underscore n left right arrow psi x underscore one dots x underscore n holds in all models of T. For example, the theory of algebraically closed fields in the signature sigma ring equals times plus minus zero one has quantifier elimination because every formula is equivalent to a Boolean combination of equations between polynomials. A substructure of a sigma structure is a subset of its domain, closed under all functions in its signature sigma, which is regarded as a sigma structure by restricting all functions and relations in sigma to the subset. An embedding of a sigma structure a display style math call a into another sigma structure b display style math call b is a map f a b between the domains which can be written as an isomorphism of a display style math call a with a substructure of b display style math call b Every embedding is an injective homomorphism, but the converse holds only if the signature contains no relation symbols. If a theory does not have quantifier elimination, one can add additional symbols to its signature so that it does. Early model theory spent much effort on proving axiomatizability and quantifier elimination results for specific theories, especially in algebra. But often instead of quantifier elimination a weaker property suffices, a theory T is called model complete if every substructure of a model of T which is itself a model of T is an elementary substructure. There is a useful criterion for testing whether a substructure is an elementary substructure, called the tarski vought test. It follows from this criterion that a theory T is model complete if and only if every first order formula phi x1 xn over its signature is equivalent modulo T to an existential first order formula, i.e. A formula of the following form V one V M Psi X one X N V one V 
M Display style exists V underscore one dots exists V underscore M psi x underscore one dots x underscore N V underscore one dots V underscore M where psi is quantifier free. A theory that is not model complete may or may not have a model completion, which is a related model complete theory that is not, in general, an extension of the original theory. A more general notion is that of model companions. Categoricity As observed in the section on first-order logic, first-order theories cannot be categorical, i.e. they cannot describe a unique model up to isomorphism, unless that model is finite. But two famous model-theoretic theorems deal with the weaker notion of kappa categoricity for a cardinal kappa. A theory T is called kappa categorical if any two models of T that are of cardinality kappa are isomorphic. It turns out that the question of kappa categoricity depends critically on whether kappa is bigger than the cardinality of the language i.e. 0 display style alef underscore 0 plus sigma where sigma is the cardinality of the signature for finite or countable signatures this means that there is a fundamental difference between 0 display style alef underscore 0 Cardinality and kappa cardinality for uncountable kappa. A few characterizations of zero display style alef underscore zero categoricity include for a complete first order theory T in a finite or countable signature the following conditions are equivalent. T is zero display style alef underscore zero categorical. For every natural number n, the stone space S n t is finite. For every natural number n, the number of formulas phi x1 x n in n free variables, up to equivalence modulo t, is finite. This result, due independently to Engler, Ryle Narduski, and Svenonius, is sometimes referred to as the Ryle Narduski theorem. Further, 0 0 Categorical theories and their countable models have strong ties with oligomorphic groups. They are often constructed as Frese limits. Michael Morley's highly non-trivial result that for countable languages there is only one notion of uncountable categoricity was the starting point for modern model theory, and in particular classification theory and stability theory. Morley's categoricity theorem if a first-order theory T in a finite or countable signature is kappa categorical for some uncountable cardinal kappa, then T is kappa categorical for all uncountable cardinals kappa, uncountably categorical, i.e. kappa categorical for all uncountable cardinals kappa. Theories are, from many points of view, the most well-behaved theories. A theory that is both zero, display style underscore zero. Categorical and uncountably categorical is called totally categorical. Topic: <laughs> Set theory. Set theory, which is expressed in a countable language, if it is consistent, has a countable model. This is known as Skolem's paradox, since there are sentences in set theory which postulate the existence of uncountable sets, and yet these sentences are true in our countable model. Particularly the proof of the independence of the continuum hypothesis requires considering sets in models which appear to be uncountable when viewed from within the model, but are countable to someone outside the model. The model theoretic viewpoint has been useful in set theory, for example in Kurt Gödel's work on the constructible universe, which, along with the method of forcing developed by Paul Cohen can be shown to prove the again philosophically interesting independence of the axiom of choice and the continuum hypothesis from the other axioms of set theory. In the other direction, model theory itself can be formalized within ZFC set theory. The development of the fundamentals of model theory such as the compactness theorem rely on the axiom of choice, or more exactly the Boolean prime ideal theorem. Other results in model theory depend on set theoretic axioms beyond the standard ZFC framework. For example, if the continuum hypothesis holds then every countable model has an ultrapower which is saturated in its own cardinality. Similarly, if the generalized continuum hypothesis holds then every model has a saturated elementary extension. Neither of these results are provable in ZFC alone. 
Finally, some questions arising from model theory such as compactness for infinitary logics have been shown to be equivalent to large cardinal axioms. Other basic notions Topic reducts and expansions A field or a vector space can be regarded as a commutative group by simply ignoring some of its structure. The corresponding notion in model theory is that of a reduct of a structure to a subset of the original signature. The opposite relation is called an expansion, e.g. the additive group of the rational numbers, regarded as a structure in the signature plus, zero can be expanded to a field with the signature times, plus, one, zero or to an ordered group with the signature plus, zero. .Similarly, if sigma is a signature that extends another signature sigma, then a complete sigma theory can be restricted to sigma by intersecting the set of its sentences with the set of sigma formulas. Conversely, a complete sigma theory can be regarded as a sigma theory, and one can extend it in more than one way to a complete sigma theory. The terms reduct and expansion are sometimes applied to this relation as well. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Interpretability. Given a mathematical structure, there are very often associated structures which can be constructed as a quotient of part of the original structure via an equivalence relation. An important example is a quotient group of a group. One might say that to understand the full structure one must understand these quotients. When the equivalence relation is definable, we can give the previous sentence a precise meaning. We say that these structures are interpretable. A key fact is that one can translate sentences from the language of the interpreted structures to the language of the original structure. Thus one can show that if a structure M interprets another whose theory is undecidable, then M itself is undecidable. <laughs> Using the compactness and completeness theorems Gödel's completeness theorem, not to be confused with his incompleteness theorems, says that a theory has a model if and only if it is consistent, i.e. no contradiction is proved by the theory. This is the heart of model theory as it lets us answer questions about theories by looking at models and vice versa. One should not confuse the completeness theorem with the notion of a complete theory. A complete theory is a theory that contains every sentence or its negation. Importantly, one can find a complete consistent theory extending any consistent theory. However, as shown by Gödel's incompleteness theorems only in relatively simple cases will it be possible to have a complete consistent theory that is also recursive, i.e. that can be described by a recursively enumerable set of axioms. In particular, the theory of natural numbers has no recursive complete and consistent theory. Non-recursive theories are of little practical use, since it is undecidable if a proposed axiom is indeed an axiom, making proof checking a supertask. The compactness theorem states that a set of sentences S is satisfiable if every finite subset of S is satisfiable. In the context of proof theory the analogous statement is trivial, since every proof can have only a finite number of antecedents used in the proof. In the context of model theory, however, this proof is somewhat more difficult. There are two well-known proofs, one by Gödel which goes via proofs and one by Malchev which is more direct and allows us to restrict the cardinality of the resulting model. Model theory is usually concerned with first-order logic, and many important results such as the completeness and compactness theorems fail in second-order logic or other alternatives. In first-order logic all infinite cardinals look the same to a language which is countable. This is expressed in the lowenheim skolem theorems, which state that any countable theory with an infinite model a has models of all infinite cardinalities at least that of the language which agree with a on all sentences, i.e. they are elementarily equivalent. Types. Fix an L display style L structure M display style M and a natural number N display style N the set of definable subsets of M N display style M caret N over some parameters 
display style a is a boolean algebra by stone's representation theorem for boolean algebras there is a natural dual notion to this one can consider this to be the topological space consisting of maximal consistent sets of formulae over a display style a we call this the space of complete n display style n types over a display style a and write s n a display style s underscore n a now consider an element m element of m n display style m in m caret n then the set of all formulae phi display style phi with parameters in a display style a in free variables x 1 x n display style x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n so that m phi m display style m models phi m is consistent and maximal such it is called the type of m display style m over a display style a one can show that for any n display style n type p display style p there exists some elementary extension n display style n of m display style m and some a element of n n display style a in n caret n so that p display style p is the type of a display style a over a display style a many important properties in model theory can be expressed with types Further many proofs go via constructing models with elements that contain elements with certain types and then using these elements. Illustrative example, suppose M is an algebraically closed field. The theory has quantifier elimination. This allows us to show that a type is determined exactly by the polynomial equations it contains. Thus the space of N Types over a subfield a display style a is bijective with the set of prime ideals of the polynomial ring a x one x n display style a x underscore one l dots x underscore n. This is the same set as the spectrum of a x one x n. Display style a x underscore one l dots x underscore n. Note, however, that the topology considered on the type space is the constructible topology. A set of types is basic open IFF. It is of the form p f x equals zero element of p. Display style p f x equals zero in p, or of the form P F X does not equal zero element of P display style P F X n e q zero in P. This is finer than the Zariski topology. Topic History. Model theory as a subject has existed since approximately the middle of the 20th century. However some earlier research, especially in mathematical logic, is often regarded as being of a model theoretical nature in retrospect. The first significant result in what is now model theory was a special case of the downward lowenheim skolem theorem, published by Leopold Lowenheim in 1915. The compactness theorem was implicit in work by Thoralf Skolem, but it was first published in 1930, as a lemma in Kurt Gödel's proof of his completeness theorem. 
The Lowenheim Skolem theorem and the compactness theorem received their respective general forms in 1936 and 1941 from Anatoly Maltsev. The development of model theory can be traced to Alfred Tarski, a member of the Lwów Warsaw School during the interbellum. Tarski's work included logical consequence, deductive systems, the algebra of logic, the theory of definability, and the semantic definition of truth, among other topics. His semantic methods culminated in the model theory he and a number of his Berkeley students developed in the 1950s and 60s. These modern concepts of model theory influenced Hilbert's program and modern mathematics. See also <laughs> Notes <laughs>